Hi, I'm Kathy, and I'm getting ready to do some architectural details, just a page of experimentation. And if you see right here, and I am just started sketching this door, by the way, uh, and I'm going to put a window in, but mainly I want to focus on how lights and shadows are affected by the uh, architecture, uh, such as details, doors, windows, awnings, if I'm doing something like a shutter. Now let me point out where I'm drawing from. Uh, these are different doors, windows, uh, steps, post, uh, overhang showing perspective of a porch. These are just some pencil, uh, pen and ink sketches I've done of uh, landscaping, a sidewalk that might be uh, concrete, a sidewalk that might be uh, slate or stepping stones is in this case. Just sends a little perspective. We want to talk about siding, wood panels, stone, uh, brick, <laughs> uh, textured wood, chimneys. I, I, like I say, I'm not sure how far we'll get, but we're going to get a little bit of uh, detail, architectural detail done here. So I have to start with some sketching. And what I'm going to challenge you to try is uh, you might want to find some references. Uh, maybe some doors and windows, uh, things that show different texture, and always, always try to figure out where the light source is coming from. If my light source is always coming in this direction, then I'm going to think that any shadows might be cast to the one side, uh, or, you know, they would always be a little bit. And yes, would I use a ruler for this kind of drawing? Absolutely. But since I'm going quickly and I'm just doing a demonstration for you, uh, forgive me if I uh, just get the main idea in. Now obviously when I'm drawing something like a window, window panes, I'm going to come back and double those lines. Uh, I can use a masking pen or I could just very carefully paint in these little window panes. Uh, the interesting thing is if you have, for instance, I think I'll jump right into this window. Um, all right, for instance, if I know that this window might have a curtain in it uh, that's off to one side, then, uh, in the, then the detail is I start to paint, and I'm just gonna mix up here a little bit of blue-brown to get some good shadow color. All right, so that's this color is a burnt sienna. This is my cerulean, excuse me, not cerulean, here's cerulean, it's a different blue. This is a uh, cobalt blue. <laughs> and just for fun, I did mix a little cerulean. Look at that beautiful, beautiful gray. All right, so maybe I'll be a little monochromatic today. Um, obviously, when I paint brick, I'll give you some brick color. But I'm going to start with um, this wash and this darker color. And I'm just going to say, all right, if I were painting window panes, then I would paint the window space such as this. And I'm going to show you that off to one side, I would have shadow, um, the curtain, and then maybe a little shadows, a little shadow indicated on the curtains. So I'm going to suggest that the curtain. Now, pardon me if I don't have this quite uh, all done, but you'll get the you'll get the idea. All right. So uh, even at this point, I'm going to take my pencil and sharpen that sketch up just a little bit and I'm uh, even cheating by dragging that color over with my pencil and sharpening up it's a trick I use when I am doing a building that has lots of windows in it and I can show you uh, some examples maybe all right so if I want to have some shadows cast I'm going to just use a, a small brush with this lighter value, my little round brush. Uh, this is a different one because it doesn't have a lot of paint already on it. And I'm just bringing down some shadows. So it looks from a distance like I have indicated, uh, let me come up to this last window pane real quickly, and then it'll be a little more complete. So that's a little trick for showing windows and shadows within the window to make it look a little bit more. Let me finish that one. Okay, so there's always a hint of the shadow because the window pane itself, that that mullet, mullet, what do you call that, Jim? Mullen? I'm not sure Mullet's what it's called. 
mullion, yes. So it casts a little shadow. Okay, so you get an indication here about what would happen. You might also have a shadow cast uh, under this window. Remember I said wherever the sunlight is coming, um, the uh, shutter itself would have a cast shadow. Of course, it would go all the way up, but uh, I'm just kind of giving you an indication of that. I like to soften any shadows with a little bit of water. And, of course, keep my edges crisp where it's suggesting the shape. I got a bulging line here, so let's correct that. So make that, of course, it's a piece of architecture. It's a piece of, uh, it's geometrical, so it's going to be, it's going to be hard. Uh, but shadows, I usually do a little softening with a shadow and allow it to, okay, so even though I haven't finished that, uh, you get the idea. The same kind of shadowing. Now, let's say this is a red door. Uh, I would have painted that red before I put the shadow on. This is going to be a, a white door, but it, it always has some shadow across. And again, the framing of doors and um, their molding always have some line to them. Uh, for instance, I started sketching. Um, now, let's see. The light is coming in this direction. So really, my shadow would be over here, okay? Again, I take the water and just soften that shadow, soften this shadow, and this would be like a window because just like the panes of this window, you're gonna have to um, darken those and just paint them in individually and allow the uh, white to hold its own as a shape. So. I need to darken that, but I could go this dark, as a matter of fact, but you get the idea. Again, so let's talk about texture. Let's say the outside of this building um, is a, si a building that's, uh, let me try to make my line straighter. Uh, the the si Say it's a siding. Um, it, this could be siding, um, this could be a brick, but the same thing happens. Uh, you have, um, oh, that's my, my white, uh, my water. This is a dark, a little bit of a dark line. Again, if the siding has a color, now you notice I just put a little water on this brush, and I lightly uh, create a sense of shadow, overlap, one board on top of the other. So that's how I create that uh, look. Now let's say you have uh, an old barn, and you're going to do... Uh, remember I talked about s uh, wood. So it, wood has a tendency, I'm going to make different size wood here. Maybe it's an old barn uh, and it has nail holes in it. You, you're going to probably want to, let's see which one is which one here. That's my nothing. Okay, uh, let's use a little more brown on the brush this time. And let's drag that uh, brush across and create some texture here. All right, so when this dries, I'll come back and add my lines, and I can even drag uh, another kind of brush. This little flat brush right here, I often use as dry brush. Now, what I'm doing over here is just taking some of the paint out of the brush, but um, it's best if this is dry, a little drier. I would drag this brush. I'm still trying to pick up a little more paint and get a sense of, there we go, of the line. Okay, almost the side of this brush can give you uh, board lines. So, all right now I just see a lot of texture. What I'm gonna do now is come in here, this could be a little drier, and give you a sense of those shadows again. Let's just do some lines in here, and again drag that down create our board lines. I've lost my nails, but again, you've had the sense of rough wood. So, depends on what your reference is. Same thing over here where I was trying to use that dry brush. So, here's a different look. Again, using the board lines. You can always come in and add your nails or even uh, sometimes wood has some grain to it. And you can do that. It depends on how close up you are, how far away you are. All right, so let's talk about stones. I'm going to use basically the same color here. And no, I don't want that stone to be like that. 
So let's say I'm working with uh, a group of stones on a wall and they fit together. And no, I don't want to keep my outline, but I'm getting started here by suggesting the shape. Now, I'm going to soften and sometimes I do a little blotting and then I just keep going. These are getting grayer here. And I add some darks because again, there'll be shadows even on the stones themselves. Now this could be an indication of a wall. You know, I talked about uh, here, this front door might have a, a mat, might have uh, steps, might have um, a sidewalk, and that perspective would always be indicated by stones that are flat. So in this case, these stones would have a, a very oval look to them and they would fit together pretty much like these little uh, squashed, uh, you know, if we're looking down on the stones, they are going to be irregular and different sizes, but more than likely, uh, they're going to be more round. But from this distortion of uh, flatness or angle, they would be um, very horizontal. They're not going to be that round shape that you would expect to see. All right, so this is indicating, and what I plan to do after I'm finished with my little demo right now, is I plan to finish up this page and show you a little bit more of how everything would appear. I'm gonna do some brick. So since I just have another minute or so and I won't quite finish this page, let me give you a brick color. This is some burnt sienna, a little bit of red, I want to dull that with my gray mixture because uh, I know that brick can be pretty darn red. I have two ways of making brick, and it depends if this brush is going to do the trick or not. Um, I can make it work. So brick, I usually lay out with a pencil line and uh, allow uh, my spaces between just to remain white. Sometimes. Um, and again, just sort of dabbing to get a little texture. And you might even find uh, some of the pathways done in brick or walls done in brick, and there'll be some variations. So you might not want to make all the bricks the same reddish brown color, but vary them a little bit. So unfortunately, when I've done brick buildings, this is how I create the brick. All right, so we talked about some stones. We've talked about brick. Um, we have in this illustration other things to deal with, um, with steps and shadows, doing sidewalks, doing grass and landscape. Now I'm just going to stop right now and say start practicing. I'm going to finish my page and I'll show you the end result uh, when I'm all done with it. Thanks for joining me today.